Hi guys and welcome to Thankful Thursdays again with myself, Kyle and also Rachel as usual. So today I had actually forgotten it was Thursday and I was in town and I thought oh my gosh I have to get back to do my video and I've just got back um, because it's kind of sunsetting time it's casting this weird colour on the video which isn't the best light but anyway I'm going to have to do with that. The question that Rachel and I are looking at today is using therapy, how to get the most out of therapy and how to use it to help you be more independent in your life. So I'm hoping this is a question that I can do justice and I wanted to start by talking about the three different experiences of counselling or therapy, whichever you'd rather call it, that I have experienced. So I've had, during my eating disorder, I've had three, technically four, but three actual periods of counselling. I did have a fourth, but um, that was very focused on kind of eating disorder behaviours and weight, so I'm not going to include that because that kind of wasn't counselling for me to move forward, it was more going and just checking in with somebody. Um, anyway, so I've had these three types of counselling. I had counselling when I was at university. I then had a period of counselling just as I left university um, and that was on the NHS. And then lastly I sought private treatment which I was about two and a half years ago and that was the longest period of the three. And the reason I'm bringing up the three periods I've had is because I think what is important in using your therapy, you know, getting the most out of your therapy, is to know what you want from therapy at that, that given time. And for me when I was at university, I had counselling to enable me to stay on my course, to keep my head above water while I did that so I could graduate and then I was going to kind of properly deal with my issues after I graduated. Unfortunately I got too sick during my third year at uni and um, so I was passed on from the university counsellor to an eating disorders service and I had some NHS counselling and at the time that counselling was focused on um, basically we spent most of the time talking about me having blood tests and things because I had a huge issue with that and basically if I hadn't have had counselling to support me in getting all these tests done that I was finding really difficult then they were going to section me for them. So the point of that therapy was you know, to help me kind of get over the milestones of accepting treatment. And then I've had this last two and a half years of therapy which has been basically just, just generally getting me well. And it's not at all been focused on weight or anything, it was just mentally getting me well and getting the most out of life and that's definitely being successful. Um, so I think what all that was about was basically what I'm saying is it's really important to know what you want to get out of your therapy at a given time. When I was in university I wasn't ready to give up my eating disorder but I needed to be coping well enough to stay on my degree and I, acknow I acknowledge that and it's important to acknowledge it. If you're not at a point that you're ready to give up your eating disorder but you still feel you need some support, then if you're being honest that that's what you need that support for, then I think that that's okay because that's where you're at and if you're not ready to move forward, you're not ready to move forward. Referring back to being honest there, I think in order to get the most out of counselling or therapy, it's absolutely crucial that you're honest both with your counsellor and more importantly with yourself. But if you're not being honest with your counsellor, chances are you're not being honest with yourself. And if you're not being honest, then you're not dealing with the real issues and really you're wasting their time and you're wasting your time and it's not going to be effective. The next thing I wanted to mention was don't expect therapy to be easy really really do not expect it to be easy having counseling or therapy if you're really working and really pushing and really trying is really painful and it is not easy and if you go in thinking that your counselor or your therapist is going to wave a magic wand and give you the cure for your eating disorder 
then you're absolutely wrong and you're going to be shocked and you're not going to get the best out of the treatment you're being offered. Um, thirdly, what I wanted to say was use what you're learning. I've known people I've spoken to online and friends that have had forms of counselling or forms of therapy and between sessions they haven't used what they've been learning in their sessions and that's just a complete waste. The point of having the counselling isn't that within that room you're using the strategies that you're learning to cope. The point is that you're continually learning to use those and you're moving forward yourself in between your sessions as well by using what you're learning. Or else you're just going to continue to struggle in between sessions and you're actually not going to make any integrated changes and what I mean by that is you're not going to learn to use those coping mechanisms automatically which is what's ultimately going to make you able to cope in the future without feeling depressed or without having to be consciously struggling against any issue you face.